built up enough wax to do a candle project. Now, I'm not much of a molded candle sort of a guy, and I have no use for those tall dinner candles, so my project is going to be to make um, Hanukkah candles, smaller candles for the holiday. Uh, I've got Maddie here in the, in the, the greenhouse helping out, and uh, we're going to show you all the steps to um, uh, making wax candles from beeswax. Uh, now here's the thing, the Hanukkah candles are small, but you need a lot of them for a full set. For eight nights, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up to ten candles, uh, you need 44 candles for a set. So, here's the process. Okay, the first thing we need to do is render our wax. This wax came from three different sources. One, it came from the decappings when we were extracting honey this summer. It came from um, when we do hive inspections and we're scraping away little errand spots of wax around the colony and then it came from frames that were ruined for one reason or another that I've taken off the frame and I'm gonna uh, start with new foundation with that. Uh, now normally if it's in the middle of the summer I would use my solar wax melter which um, uh, I got for, I built from an, uh, a design on the internet but because it's cooler now and I won't be able to even use that and because I've got a lot I'm going to uh, use um, put it into a pot of boiling water, and it all just goes in there, everything together. And that just gets stirred up into a big blobby soup. All the junk stays in there. And we'll let that sit for a uh, boil for about 30 minutes. All right, about 20 minutes later, and you can see a couple things. One, that everything in here is melted down. Now, a couple things. One is, you're asking, how is this slop going to turn into beautiful wax? Just wait. The second thing is, don't use your favorite tomato sauce pot. This is a pot from Goodwill. Cost me four bucks. It's going to be forever corroded with propolis and wax and don't try using your good inside pots for this process. Also it's a big mess you can see I'm covered with plastic and I'm ready now to pour all of this into um, this contraption a little plastic bin from Goodwill some uh, uh, stocking what do you call it leotard uh, that's been stretched over the frame and a little bit of water at the bottom. Hose. Penny hose. Pen. There you go. Now I'm just going to carefully Pour this in, and you can see all of the impurities staying on top. Now, some That's it. We're going to let that set up. Uh, it'll be a couple hours while that cools off, and then we'll see what we got. All right, a couple hours have passed, and... Uh, in the summer, we'd have to wait a lot longer, but in the autumn here, we can see what's going on with our wax. So I'll carefully remove this junk, which will get thrown out. Well, put in the compost, right? Yeah. And now we've got a piece of wax. Now. I'll take a scraper and scrape that off. I've got still some impurities in there that came through the, the mesh, but I, so I might um, uh, strain this again. But and for um, beekeepers or wax uh, uh, candle makers who really want uh, refined, very fine wax, they'll filter this another couple times. But I like a good rustic candle, so I'll scrape this off, and this will be ready for the. Uh, the, the wax melter for the double boiler. That's the next step. To melt my wax, I'm using a double boiler, which is just one of these crock pots uh, that has a control that's important because I keep it as low as possible is all I need to keep that. And it's only a little bit of water that's touching the can. I, I've uh, screwed the can to a couple of wood, pieces of wood and kind of draped it so that it will stay in but is accessible for the dipping. And um, 
You can also use a pot and then just drape it on the pot, but then you have to have a hot plate. And this kind of is what I got at Goodwill and it does the trick. All right, so you're gonna start by cutting your wick to length. Now the wick I'm using is a six slash zero cotton braided wick. Um, and this is wick that is specifically designed for, um, for beeswax uh, because of the way it, uh, it uh, melts. So um, I got this from the Candle Wick Company in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. I had to kind of pay for a whole spool here, but I'll use this for a long time. And um, so that's the uh, wicks we're using. And I've, uh, I've set a little guide on our board here so we know what the length is so they can, uh, we don't have to trim them later. All right, so first step with this wick is to just give it a dip. Uh, and this first dip is going to take longer for its own. Oh, you don't want them to touch because we don't want them to stick together. But it'll take longer for them to drip because when it dries on wax, it dries faster. So we let them dip for a couple seconds, then we can hang them up. That's our first step. We're going to give them a second dip before we roll them to get them straight. And that second dip is just to get another layer of wax on there. Once that second dip dries, we'll just lay them on our board and roll them so they are straight. That's what's going to make those candles straight. Now, some people use weights. Um, you can buy um, stretchers so that the candles get kind of a, the, the, the wick gets run through a, um, a whole um, contraption that keeps the, the string straight. But we just kind of decided we were going to roll them. And uh, it's worked out for us so far. So uh, we're going to roll and then rehang them back up for some more dipping. Now this is going to require, doing it this way, we're going to require at least one more roll uh, before they are, uh, we don't need to roll between dips. So we'll probably dip this two more times and then roll again and then we'll be ready to uh, keep dipping. All right, so here's their second rolling. And after they're rolled, we're going to hang them on our homemade dipper. I don't know if that's the actual term, but that's what we're calling it. A couple pieces of wood mitered together, and then I cut some grooves so that the spacing was going to be a lot easier than just putting them on a wood rack like that. They touch. So having this dipper, and I kind of used a hanger and... Um, and made a little hook and I knew I had these racks in, in the, this room that we were going to use. And then you re-center them or, uh, so they're level and then they're ready for their next dips. And then they don't have to be rolled anymore. They'll stay straight for the rest of the dipping. But then we'll dip them about 12 more times. Uh, and that's what we've calculated is necessary to get our roughly three-eighths of an inch thick candles for Hanukkah. And we're just going to keep dipping. As you're... Uh, dipping your candles, the wax level is going to go down, so periodically you have to uh, feed your wax source. So you just take some of your wax. I like to break it up into smaller pieces so it'll melt faster. So that's some of that wax that we had uh, clarified earlier. Or, And then we're also putting these scraps from when we cut off the bottoms of the candles from earlier, and those get back in, and that raises the level of the wax so we can get back to um, dipping as soon as that melts down. Before the last dip, you see it's starting to form a point at the bottom. So we'll take them off the rack and we've got a little mark here and we'll cut it to size, put it back on the rack and I'm just using a little exacto knife. It's a very soft wax. Put it back on the rack, one last dip and then we'll be done. Rehang them, 
level them out again, and then one last dip. And just hang them to dry. And then they dry up, and then we'll cut the wicks and ship them off to family. All right, happy Hanukkah.